Joe and Jill Biden were talking to CNN's Chris Cuomo about mental health and the need to destigmatize it. And I absolutely agree with everything they were saying in this portion of the interview, because of course, mental health awareness is something that we all need to focus on. There are so many people who still, in 2019, downplay you know the need for mental health awareness and dismiss mental health issues altogether which in my view is just an idiotic position to have because if you believe that other portions of your body can sometimes be defective in some way or require attention require health care why would you exclude the brain from that list of things that can go wrong with your body if you can say well you know sometimes the body doesn't produce insulin so we need to take insulin shots to fix that why can't you also extend that logically to the brain and think well you know if the brain isn't getting enough serotonin that can also cause problems like there are literally people who argue that mental health issues are just all in your mind they're made up and that to me is infuriating and it's absurd because i have struggled with mental health my entire life so to hear people talk about this in such a dismissive way like keemstar for example it's infuriating so i loved everything that joe biden was saying here it was the first time he actually said something that made sense and was actually substantive and important However, the conversation just fell off a cliff once the issue of healthcare came up. Because if you genuinely believe that we should have healthcare parity when it comes to physical health and mental health, which is the only right position in my view, then there's only one policy solution that has been proposed that will do that. It's Medicare for All. But he's going to give you a reason as to why we shouldn't do Medicare for All. And his reason is so bizarre, so juvenile, that I don't even know how he takes himself seriously, how he doesn't reflect on what he's saying because it's that dim-witted. Let's listen. Think of all the people out there, Chris, who don't. I mean, one of the things we should be debating in this campaign is health care, whether or not we have the adequate and what's the best way to get to health care. When Barack and I, when Barack did, I helped when the Affordable Care Act, we made parity between mental health and physical health. That was a fundamental breakthrough in how we thought about how things should work. So look, I just think the- The party now wants to get rid of the ACA. Medicare for all cannot exist with the ACA. It cannot, and that's why I'm opposed to any Republican who wants to dismantle it or any Democrat who wants to dismantle it. The idea that you're gonna come along and take the most significant thing that happened that any president has tried to do and that got done and dismantle it makes no sense to Four me. Four out of the top five people in your polls right now are on the complete opposite side from you. Well, I understand that, and that's worth debating about. That's about the future. What are we gonna do? I believe they're totally sincere. I think they think they have the right answer, but look, starting over would be, I think, a sin. They say what? you're either all in, or it's half measures that don't work. Well, let me removed. tell you something. I, <laughs> I noticed the measures and the Affordable Care Act worked pretty well, put 20 million people back and gave them health care, yeah. 100 million people who had pre-existing conditions. You notice none of them are saying they want to do with any of that, right? Mm -hmm. And you notice none of them are saying that, they, but they are saying they want to, if you're ha satisfied with your employer-based health care, you got to give it up. If you're Look, we provide a Medicare option. That's exactly what Rap Rock and I talked about in the couldn't beginning. Couldn't get it through, though. No, we couldn't get it, but now, now things are changing because guess what's happened? You know, the thing Brock and I would talk about, and God love him, he never took credit that he should have because it was like everything was dropping on his desk. And I said, we ought to make the case that people know what you did. It wasn't until they started to take it away they even realized it was a consequence of what Barack had done. And so now, if you notice, in 18, we went out in all those campaigns, you find the Republicans in, I want to get, a I want to get rid of pre-existing conditions coverage. I want to get rid of... Uh, so it's a different place. Mm. And the, 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 the public's been educated in a way that I believe they've embraced it. And I'm ready to take that on. So he's essentially admitting here that he doesn't want to do Medicare for all because that means you'd essentially have to get rid of the ACA to do Medicare for all. And what he implied there was, you know, the ACA is valuable because Obama did it. I know, you know, Medicare for all would lead to universal coverage for every single American, but Obama did it. So there's sentimental value in the ACA, and we started on this trajectory. So let's just follow that trajectory and, you know, improve the Affordable Care Act. He literally is communicating to you that he doesn't want to do Medicare for all 
because he wants to protect something that Obama did because Obama did it. What an imbecilic way to view politics. He's functionally the opposite of Trump because Trump wants to dismantle everything that Obama does because Obama bad and Joe Biden wants to protect anything that Obama did because Obama good. It doesn't matter if Obama just made really incrementalist fixes to things. Well, we should protect that incrementalist fix because we all love Obama and we want to protect everything he did, even if he didn't really do much and he left a lot of room for improvement. I mean, who views politics this way? Who views politics this way? Let's say, hypothetically speaking, that Bernie Sanders were elected president and he fought for Medicare for all, but only got a public option. I would be disappointed. I would be frustrated. But I like Bernie Sanders. So let's say we get a president, you know, whoever, after Bernie Sanders subsequently, and that individual says, well, I want to now move to Medicare for all. What progressive would say, no, we shouldn't move to Medicare for all from a public option because Bernie Sanders did it and we like Bernie. Nobody gives a shit about the legacy of a president. We care about policy. This is what being the president is about. It's not about your fucking legacy. It is about governance and producing good policies that benefit the American people. I don't care that Obama did the ACA. I don't give a shit. It was Romney Care Effectively, which was cooked up by the Heritage Foundation. I couldn't care less about the ACA. What I care about is expanding health care to every single American. That's what I care about. But Joe Biden here is telling you, you know, um, I would never dismantle, dismantle the ACA because Obama did it. And Obama, you know, anything he does, I just get that warm and fuzzy feeling. Pathetic. Absolutely pathetic, Joe Biden. You are pathetic. He also says, starting over, I think, would be a sin. So we already laid down the foundation with the ACA, so why would we start from scratch? Except this is a lie. He's lying to you. Because with Medicare for All, you're not starting from scratch. You're taking a policy that's older than the ACA, which is the most popular social program in America, Medicare, and you are fixing it. You're closing all the gaps. You're expanding coverage. And then you extend that to everyone. We're not starting from scratch with Medicare for All. We're building off of a more solid foundation that has stood the test of time, that people love. So to say, oh, well, Medicare for All is starting from scratch, either you're dumb or you're disingenuous when you say something like that, Joe Biden. But this isn't just Joe Biden. Other corporate Democrats say that as well. But it's a lie. We're not starting from scratch. We're not saying a new single payer system where we wipe out Medicare. We're taking what already exists and we are improving it, making it better and making its coverage universal. So how can you possibly say with a straight face that Medicare for all is starting over? That makes no sense because it's factually incorrect and you're being a liar, Joe Biden. And then he also uses the line that we've been seeing lately that, you know, getting Medicare for all somehow constitutes people losing something because if you get medicare for all then as a result you lose your private employer based insurance except people will lose that anyway if their employer decides on a whim we're gonna change providers or if they lose their job and is it really accurate to say that you're losing something if you're getting something that's better in return I mean, if I'm holding a turd in my hand and you take that turd out of my hands and give me a Snickers bar instead, um, I guess you could technically say, well, I lost the turd, but you're getting something better. And I don't know why whenever I talk about healthcare, I always use, you know, analogies related to shit, but <laughs> it's on my heart. So we'll roll with it. I mean, you're not losing anything. You are getting Cadillac coverage. This is what an anti-Medicare for all person, Michael Bennett, called it. He said, of course, even though you're losing your private insurance, sure, I'll admit that you're getting Cadillac coverage. You're getting something better. You're not losing anything. You're gaining something. And you're not just gaining better coverage. You're getting money in your pocket. Because guess what? You may see higher taxes, a 4% payroll tax, for example, which is one of the uh, proposals to help fund Medicare for all, but you're no longer going to be paying your monthly health insurance premiums, which go up all the time. You're no longer paying 
for copays, deductibles. The average American will save more than $4,000 every single year if we get Medicare for all. So we literally have absolutely nothing to lose and everything to gain. However, because people like Joe Biden are bankrolled by the health insurance industry, which is clinging to life right now as they see support for Medicare for all skyrocket, he's spreading this misinformation, not because he believes the bullshit he's saying. I think he's probably also misinformed, but I think he's, he's well aware of the fact that Medicare for all is better. He's spreading this misinformation at the behest of his health industry donors. So it's not a coincidence that people like Michael Bennett, John Delaney, and Joe Biden, they all have the same lines of attack against Medicare for all. Oh, well, you lose your employer-based insurance. Oh, well, why would we start from scratch? Do you ever wonder why these people all have the same exact talking points? It's almost like these are talking points that are disseminated by these companies that have something to gain because their CEOs happen to say the same thing. This is how you know who is and isn't on your side. Medicare for all, if you truly care about all health care, physical health, mental health, then Medicare for all is what will truly make physical and mental health reach parity. And guess what? Medicare for all covers everything, dental, vision, and mental health care. But Joe Biden won't tell you about that. He doesn't want to admit that because he's a liar, specifically because he's shilling for his health industry donors. And that's a damn shame.